a very warm welcome to all of you my dear students today our topic is operation research a very interesting topic a new topic uh, here over you can see the contact details my name is piraj mojumdar my mobile number is given over here here is my email address pirasar@gmail.com and here you can find the youtube channel where you can subscribe to get daily updates so let us start our today's topic on operation research now let us see the syllabus of the operation research you can see we have total seven module over here the first one is the introduction part where we will have the brief idea of overall topic we are going to have in our next classes the next one uh, there is decision theory then we have linear programming problem then we have transportation assignment problems and network analysis waiting line problems and many other things we are going to learn so uh, before i go to the introduction part i would like to say that this subject operation research as a is a very scoring subject you know this is a more of a mathematical subject i can say just you have to solve the numericals and you are getting full marks ekhane theory er upor otto ta jor nei theoretical subject noy eta kintu conceptual subject so if you are good enough in solving the problems and numericals you are going to score a high mark okay so keep in mind this is a scoring subject so let us begin with today's introduction class from the name itself operation research you can have a idea the name originates from military or defense systems how operation research more like operation kashmir operation eagle this type of names we are usually heard in the movies so historically the term operation research originated during second world war when usa and great britain's armed forces sought the assistance of scientists to solve complex and very difficult strategical and tactical problems of warfare like making mines harmless or increasing the efficiency of anti submarine aerial warfare etc basically during the second world war what happened there was a need a very need of optimization of the resources that were being used to fight the battle in the battlefield what was the problem the problem was that they were having resources in abundance but not in optimized way what is that that means in some places they are having abundance of resources stored whereas some other places they were lacking in resources like ammunition medicines foods okay so there was a great urge or need of optimization or optimization of the resources for proper utilization and uses of the resources in that particular place in particular time so what happened they asked their scientist to find a technique or tools rather i say to optimize the use of the resources in case of profit we usually maximize and when it comes to the cost we generally try to reduce the cost but in order to have a maximum profit we have to optimize the quality and the cost side by side otherwise the quality will be compromised 
previously when the operation research subject originated it was limited to the military organizations mainly later on it gained its popularity in various various spheres and fields of industry business governments etc so operation research employs mathematical logic to complex problems requiring managerial decisions operation research aids in solving diverse business problems in planning and investigation of major operation decisions to define operation research i have to say that operation research signifies research on operations however it takes into consideration a particular view of operations and a particular kind of research operation research is the organized application of modern science mathematics and computer techniques to complex military government business or industrial problems arising in the direction of management of large system of men materials money and machines the purpose is to provide the management with explicit quantitative understanding and assessment of complex situations to have sounder basis for arriving at basis best decisions operations research seeks the optimum state in all spheres and thus provides optimum solution to organization problems that was i was telling before it is a it is of considerable value in production management of also which we have learned in the previous semester in the sixth semester of production and operations management hu611 there we have learned uh, uh, machine scheduling m machine and jobs using johnson's algorithm then we have done the network analysis using cpm and part technique then we have uh, you uh, solved the quality uh, assurance problems using x chart p chart r chart likewise so uh, various steps involved uh, are as follows first you have to understand the actual real situation capture the same and define the problem second you have to formulate a mathematical model a model is of great help in facilitating the investigations of operation and operations research which expresses a problem by a model the model covers the relationship of the variables so the models uh, generally used here are of two types an analog model which takes the form of an electronic circuit or maybe a mechanical one the other one is uh, more of a symbolic model in the form of a matrix graph or an equation we already have a knowledge of um, matrix okay uh, previously we also have uh, had used uh, in the production of operations management we all will also going to use the matrix in transportation assignment problems in later classes now uh, this matrix form model is always uh, you can uh, say it is a mathematical also mathematical model also this models provide solutions in quantitative form that is cost weight etc depending upon the per problem this operation research models can also be classified as probabilistic and exact models probabilistic models rely upon the probability theory and contain obvious recognition of uncertainty they are very useful in advertising problems like in uh, you can say in forecasting we have done in the hu611 uh, production operation management uh in exact models chance or uncertainty plays a very minor role from the name itself it says exact model the previous one was a probabilistic model and in the exact models for example as in long range of production planning with orders already in hand the next step is to 
data is supplied to the model we have to supply the data into the model information is computed the results are analyzed to find the mathematical solution for alternative policies next we have to interpret the solution prepare the information in such a form that it is meaningful intelligible and quantitative translate it into a decision next we have to implement the decision to the real actual situation so after implementing we have to verify the results so uh, after applying the solution to real situation the actual results produced by the model must be tested statistically and verified to explore any significant deviation from the expected results now if found so the model can be modified and again the cycle is repeated now if i come to the application portion of operation research there are various fields where we can apply this particular subject operation research with its various solving techniques and tools few applications of operation research are uh, first of all you can locate factories by locating factories and warehouses to minimize transportation costs we already have transportation and assignment problems in our um, upcoming modules we will solve there using what techniques next work allocation to machines for minimizing production time and costs we have already solved machine scheduling problems in our previous semester uh, sixth semester in the in subject productions and operations management where we have sequenced and tried to minimize as far as possible the ideal time of the machines next you can apply this our subject to invent control problems okay we have already seen in eoqs uh, economic order quantity problems we have uh, uh, used the different models uh, all total of five models we have used to um, uh, find various uh, solutions to the inventory controls next you can apply your to material handling problems material handling you know is a fast thing and it is very important uh, to know how to handle materials in a warehouse or a shop or a factory next you can uh, deal with waiting times waiting times just like that in the, you say you can say in a barber shop in a um, uh, bank okay where public dealings are going on uh, the solving of this type of problems dealing with the waiting time uh, you can use operation research subject uh, various tools and techniques now you can also uh, use or in equipment replacements uh, dividing advertising budgets okay uh, establishing equitable bonus systems uh, routing of tankers traffic control petrochemical mixes municipal and hospital administration problems and marketing also okay so these are the few applications uh, fields of uh, our subject now coming to the history of our i have already uh, told you that this uh, subject has been existed as a science since 1930s okay and um, this was originated during the uh, second world war when there was a need an urge to optimize the resources and the allocations of the resources now what is operation research in one sentence you can say operation research is an art and science the british and europeans refer it as operational research whereas the americans refer as operations research and the synonyms you can say as management science decision science industrial engineering and so on it is often considered to be a sub field of mathematics already i in uh, earlier i have said that this is a subject of more of a mathematics than of a theoretical one if you can solve the numericals if you have the concept and idea to how to solve this particular problems and numericals you are going to score a huge marks in this subject so the next the americans are using 
the terms OR and AMS together, ORMS, which means Operations Research Management Service. Now, if I uh, told you the definition of OR, it says by uh, Hillier and Lieberman, uh, they published the definition in the year of 2005, a scientific approach to decision making that involves the operations for organized systems. OR is concerned with optimal decision making in and modeling of deterministic and probabilistic systems that originate from real life. In another way, uh, Mr. Uh, Saul L. Goss, College of Business and Management, University of Maryland in the year of 1979, said operations research is the application of scientific methods to decision problems. It has found wide use uh, and acceptance in all areas of business, as I earlier told you, government and industry. Now, these are the different operation research techniques. And we are somehow familiar with some of the terms over here, given over here, that is the inventory models you already know while solving the UK problems in the previous semester, replacement models, uh, networks using CPM part, uh, queuing theory we will learn in our upcoming classes, simulation models, sequencing models we have already have solved in the previous semester, decision theory we are going to solve in the upcoming classes, game theory and markup models are the next ones. Now, coming to the first module. In the first module, what we have in our person's research today is the decision theory. Look, this is the introductory class and the in, in introduction module, uh, we have to identify and uh, make ourselves familiar with the different modules and the chapters we are going to learn in our upcoming classes. So today, we will only have some basic idea about the modules which we are going to learn in our upcoming classes. So we will just have an idea. We will not go into the depth. We will go into the depth in our upcoming classes, the next classes. Okay. So the first thing you have to go is decision theory. What does decision theory mean? It provides an analytical and systematic approach to the study of decision making wherein data concerning the occurrence of different outcomes may be evaluated to enable the decision maker to identify suitable alternative. Now, decision theory gives us effective decisions, better coordination, facilitates control and improves productivity. This is the application part or the uh, more you can say what are the uh, necessity of decision theory. Now, this is a body actually what we are going to solve in our upcoming classes in the decision theory module. We are going to make decision under certainty. Wherever there exists only one outcome for a decision, we are dealing with this category. Then comes the decision under uncertainty. When more than one outcome can result from any single decision, there is more than one state of nature exists. Then comes decision under risk. The decision makers chooses from among several possible outcomes where the probability of occurrence can be stated objectively from past data. And the last one is the decision under conflict. It comes, neither states of nature are completely known, nor are they completely uncertain. That is what decision under conflict. So this is the body of the decision theory we are going to solve in our next classes. Okay. So uh, here is one also another diagram of decision making. You can so see that decision making comes in uncertainty, high risk functions. Already I depicted here complexity, inter interpersonal issues, and we have to deal with the alternatives, etc. So now comes linear programming. In next module, we are going to learn how to solve linear programming problems. What is linear programming problems? Linear programming problems has got is three steps. First, we have to formulate a linear programming problem. Then, this is the formulation. As you can say, this is the formulation. We have to, we have, will be given a uh, problem in a um, paragraph form. From there, we have to uh, formulate this structure. This is a structure of linear programming, okay? We have to 
formulate this structure. Next step, we have to solve this particular linear programming problem by graphical method. As you can see, these are the graphs. These are the graphs. These are the graphs. So, using graphical method, you have to solve LPP. And the last step is we have to solve linear programming by analytical method, or you can say by using the uh, simplex method, which you have in your syllabus only. Okay, then we have to perform the sensitivity analysis. So we will have our depth in this particular chapter in solving linear programming. Uh, first step is the formulation as I already told you. The first step will be the formulation of LPP pro problem from a given um, problem in a paragraph manner. We have to formulate this structure from a given problem. Okay, this is the structure. This is the, called the formulation of LPP. The next step is to solve using graphical method and then we have to solve using L LPP by simplex method and we have to perform sensitive analysis. So that's all about the basic idea of a linear programming problem. We are not going to the depth. Next we have transportation and assignment problems. What does that mean? Today, I am going to give you a basic idea about transportation and assignment problems, but in our latter classes, I will make you familiar how to solve a transportation or assignment problems. But today, I will just give you a basic idea what is transportation and assignment problem. Transportation, as the name suggests, the cost incurred during transporting a certain product from one place to another is the transportation cost. So, as a manager, you have to think how to optimize or minimize the transportation cost by using techniques in OR. We are going to solve this particular transportation problem. The various techniques we use to solve generally a transportation problem are, which, are, which you have in syllabus, are Northwest Corner Method, Least Cost Method, and Vogel's approximation method. Then you have to check the optimality of the table by stepping stone method or Modi method uh, abbreviated as modified distribution table or UV method, Modi method or UV method. So we have got Northwest corner method, then you have uh, LCM or least cost method, then you have Vogel's approximation method or VAM method, then you have to find the optimality of the table by using Modi method, UV method, or stepping stone method, okay? So, here you can have the idea of a transportation problem. Here what is given? Capacity of each source, demand of each destination, transportation cost to ship one unit from a source to a destination, okay? And we have to, what is our aim? Our aim is to minimize the transportation cost to find the most economical way of satisfying the demands of the destination by using the resources. So, this is a decision matrix, you can say. This is a matrix of a certain typical transportation problem. Look, this A, B, C say these are the sources and B, E, F say these are the destinations. You can also say these are the plants and these are the warehouses. So, we have to transport materials from this source to this destination or this plan to these destinations. Now, what does this mean? This means if you are to, if you are going to transport material from A to D, that means from source A to destination D or plant A to warehouse D, you have to pay rupees five per unit material or per unit product. That means for transporting material from A to D, you have to pay rupees 5 for per unit product. For a single product, you have to pay rupees 5 for transporting from A to D. Okay, from A to D. Now, say you have to transport from C to F. For transporting C to F, you have to pay rupees 6 per product. For transporting B to E, you have to pay rupees 6 per product. So, it is clear to all of you the meaning of this particular decision matrix. And here they are given supply, that is the 50, 40, 60, and demand for this particular decision.
destinations as given as 20, 95, 35. And they have summed this total supply and this total demand and they are similar or uh, and they are uh, uh, the supply total uh, summation of supply and total summation of demand is equal that is it is a balanced transportation problem no need to worry we'll see later on uh, when we will going to solve the transportation problem just keep in mind uh, these are the structure of all transportation problems this is the structure in a uh, in a different way you can say in a generalized way this you can see O1, O2, O3, O4 are the sources, D1, D2, D3, D4 are the destinations and these are the CIJ values. CIJ means I means row and J means the columns. So C11, C22, C33, C12, C13, C14 these are the uh, value of the cells of the particular row and column. You can look over here. These are the demands D1, D2, D3, D4 similarly supplies S1, S2, S3, S4. Similarly, a different problem has been given over here. So this is the basic structure of transportation problem and we are going to ma minimize using different techniques. Let us see some assignment problems. Now, what is assignment problem? Assignment problem, you have to, in assignment problem, you have to assign a particular job to a particular machine or man. Say, we have this type of problem. What is written over here? I will just read it out in a small time. Uh, an assignment problem is a special type of transportation problem in which the objective is to assign a number of resources to an equal number of activities so as to minimize total cost or maximize total profit. Resources such as man, machines, have varying degree of efficiency for performing different activities as job. Now, let us see. This is a typical type of an assignment problem. This matrix, this matrix is given over here. These are the machines. Okay. These are the jobs. Sometimes they will be giving you as men. This will be the men and this will be the jobs. And one rule we have to follow here. We have to assign one at a time. Remember this golden rule. We have to assign one job for one person at a time. We cannot assign two jobs to one person. We have to assign one job to one person only. Sometimes it is also called as one by one, one for one. Okay. What does that mean? I'll clear you. Look, these are the machines and these are the jobs. If you have to perform this job, say this one number job by this machine, A, A number, A machine, you have to pay rupees five or you have to incur rupees five. Similarly, if you perform this particular job by this particular machine name as B, you have to pay rupees 7. Similarly, if you have to perform phone number job by say C number of machine, you have to incur 8 rupees. Similarly, this all these given over here are the cost of performing this particular jobs by this machine. So, you have to assign all the jobs to all the machines one at a time. Keeping in mind, you have to minimize the assignment cost. Okay. You have to perform all the job by engaging all the machines one at a time. But keeping in mind, assign, assigning the jobs, by assigning jobs, you have to minimize or optimize the total cost okay so this is another problem uh, a shop has four machinists to be assigned to four machines look they have given now men okay this machinists say these are the men these are the machines the hourly cost of having each machine operated by each machinist is as follows hourly costs are given over here for one machinist number one machinist if he perform on machine a yep he will uh, demand rupees 12 it is sorry it is given as dollar whatever you say you will demand 12 dollar to you if you perform uh, with machine is 3 certain jobs say B you have to pay rupees 8 to him so the question comes however because he does not have enough experience machine is 3 cannot op uh, operate machine B this is a different thing and the main question they are going to ask is that determine the optimal assignment and compute 
the total minimum cost this is the assignment problem structure okay now next comes the network analysis what is network analysis network analysis you already are familiar as we have solved the cpm and part problem already in our previous semester this are you already know uh, this uh, nodes these are the activities given with the arrow mark so this is about network analysis i will just read it out for you an activity refers to the physically identifiable part of the project which consumes time and cost activity is represented by an arrow the activity may have a predecessor activity and a successor activity for example you have uh, seen you can see this thing over here the activity what is the network network is a graphical representation or an arrow diagram presented to the management in respect of a project which consists of all details regarding consumption of time and cost not only for each activity but also for the whole project so that man management can manipulate the resources and cost can be controlled in a more effective manner so uh, you can see a uh, problem is given over here with a uh, network so this is the basic structure of network analysis okay next we have this sequencing problem now what is sequencing problem sequencing problem uh, you can see over here it is written as the problem occurs when people go through three or more checkpoints at about the same time while the printer printing the first log entry the other print call waits after the first log entry is printed there is no guarantee which log entry will be printed next so log entries may not be printed in the same order they were sent to the printer now these are the different types of sequencing problems one machine many jobs two machines many jobs three machines many jobs and many machines many jobs now there is a solved out problem is given over here what is that you have already solved this type of problems in your previous uh, session uh, production and operations management where we have scheduled the machine and we have find out the flow time total flow time the two uh, the uh, jobs actually j1 j2 j3 uh, j1 j2 j3 j4 j5 is given as jobs the jobs are going to spend in the soft flow that is uh, they have calculated over here and it is about 30 units of time they have spent they have to spend in order to uh, minimize minimize the maximum ideal time of this two machine and just remember one thing the, uh, in sequencing problem or schedule, uh, scheduling problem we have to keep in mind to reduce the ideal time of the machines we are dealing with the ideal time of the machines only we don't have to think about the ideal time about reducing the ideal time of the jobs we are only concerned with the optimization or minimization of the machining uh, machines ideal time okay just have a quick recap how to solve this type of problems look in this decision matrix they have given machine a machine b the processing times for these jobs all the jobs j2 1 6 for machine a g2 has processing time one unit of here it is always given already given in hours so you can say g2 has one hour of processing time in machine a and six hour in uh, machine b so you have to solve uh, you have to schedule and find out the flow time maximum flow time they are going to spend these jobs are going to spend in a uh, flow time uh, in a flow shop so how to solve this first of all take the j2 job j2 job comes in zero time in machine a and in machine a it has to stay for one hour for its processing as it already given over here processing time so zero plus one gives you one it goes in one hour time from machine a then it enters in machine b at one hour time one hour the machine b will be ideal that is inevitable you cannot help from uh, uh, remaining uh, uh, sitting ideal of machine b machine b have to sit ideal for at least of one hour as because job j2 will have to come out in one hour now machine b has six machine uh, processing time for j2 so six plus one gives you seven at seven hours it goes out the j2 goes out 
next comes the G4. G4 has three processing time machine A and eight processing time machine B. So G2 enters machine A at one hour, not zero hour, as because after one hour the machine A becomes free. So the G4 can enter. So G4 enters at one hour, its processing time is three, three plus one is four. Next it goes out of machine at four hours, but he have to sit idle for three hours as because machine B is already processing the job J2. So at seven hours of time, J4 will enter. So this in, in time of J4 in machine B is seven and the processing time is given over is eight. So seven plus eight for machining B is total 15. 15 is the out time for job J4 from machine B. Okay. Now the next job comes J3 at four as because J4 gets out of machine A at four. So in time of J3 is J, uh, four, four hours. The processing time is nine, nine plus four is 13. At 13 hours, J3 gets out of the machine B, A. And you have to wait for two hours. We are dealing with the ideal time of machines, not with the ideal time of jobs. So if the job J3 has to wait for two hours, we don't have to bother as because machine B is already engaged. He's not sitting idle. So J4 job goes out of the machine B at 15 time. So at 15 time, J3 will enter and it has got seven processing time in machine B. So 15 plus seven gives you 22. Now, J5 enters at 13 hours in machine A, okay? So 13 and here it is given as processing time as 10. So 13 plus 10 gives you 23. Next, you have to now look here it is 22. The machine B frees, makes itself free at 22 hours. but the job J5 has to come out at 23 hours from machine A. So here you can calculate a ideal time for machine B, which is one hour. As because 23 is the out time of machine, uh, job J5 from machine A. After in, uh, getting out of machine A, it will enter to machine B. But machine B is already free at 22 hours. So 22 and 23. It will enter at 23, so one hour of ideal time for machine B. Now, at machine B, it has got four processing time. So four plus 23 gives you 27. Next, the J1 job. J1 job enters at 23 as because 23, J5 gets out of machine A. So 23 is the entering time for J1 for machine A. And its processing time is five, so 23 plus five gives you 28. Now, it goes out of the machine A at 23 eight hours, but the machine J5 already get out from machine B at 27. So machine B has got a one hour idle time again. So the in time for machine J1 is 28, but the machine is already freed at 27 hours, but it has to wait the machine B. So one hour again, you have to calculate, take in consideration ideal time for machine B. Now 28 and Two is the processing time for machine B for job J1, 28 plus two gives you 30. So 30 is the total time of processing the whole uh, number of jobs. So the flow time in shop floor for all these jobs is 30 hours. So this is a typical type of a sequencing problem. Next comes the project schedule. You already solved in the earlier semester, critical path method, CPM method, and um, part project evolution and review technique method. Okay, here is a, a structure of given over here is a part. In part, we are using probabilistic times. Okay, and in CPM, we are using exact times. Okay, so you can see from the structure itself only, and the structure of also, you can find the differences between the part and CPM. This is a project schedule. Next comes introduction to integer programming. Integer programming is uh, in which all variables are required to be integers. It's called pure integer programming problem. An integer programming in which only some of the variables are required to be integers is called a mixed integer programming problem. An integer programming problem in which all the variables must be zero or one is called zero to one integer programming. Likewise, the 
a linear program probably obtained by omitting all integer or 0 to 1 constraints on the variables is called LP relaxation of the IP. Now this is the structure of a LP. We will see this in during solving a linear programming problem by analytical method, uh, by simplex method basically. We will see how to solve this. This is the maximization of state. So this is the profit and the constraint. So this is basically the structure of integer programming and we will solve it later classes the simplex method when next comes OR models to have some basic models on OR models nonlinear programming means when expressions defining the objective function or constraints of an optimization model are not linear they are called nonlinear programming indeed it can be argued that all linear expressions are really approximations for nonlinear ones in general, a nonlinear programming model is much more difficult to solve than a similarly sized linear programming model. It is obvious that nonlinear programming has got some different constraints and we need to uh, solve it in a different way. So it is uh, somewhat uh, difficult to solve nonlinear programming. Okay, no problem. We will see it on later classes. And there is one table given over here uh, which gives uh, basic differences between linear programming and nonlinear programming. And linear programming says a method to achieve the best outcome in a mathematical model whose requirements are represented by represented by linear uh, relationships. Sorry for the uh, picture, it shows some hazy, so I am reading out for you. And nonlinear programming says a process of solving an optimization problem where the constraints or the objective functions are nonlinear. It again says that linear programming helps to find the best solution to a problem using constraints that are linear. And the nonlinear programming says it helps to find the best solution to a problem using constraints that are nonlinear. Okay, so we come to the next slide. It gives the inventory control methods techniques. So in inventory control methods, you are already familiar with, with many. I think most of the uh, term is given over here. You have already heard, and you have already gone through it. ABC analysis, you know. It is a type of typical type of inventory management where um, we have to select the most essential ones and the most costly ones. So we have to segregate the most costly ones. Okay, and data analysis is all also somewhat like a technique to control um, inventory management and vital essential. Okay, these are the controlling techniques of inventory management. Ordering cost you also know uh, while solving the problems of UQ, uh, economic order quantity. Inventory carrying cost you know, uh, already we have used this inventory carrying cost um, in UQ problems, economic order quantity problems. And economic order quantity is given over. A lead time you already know, the lead time is the, uh, the time gap between uh, placing an order and to um, receive that particular order, the time gap between uh, placing an order and receiving the order is known as lead time. Safety stock, you all already know, we have to maintain safety stock. Um, as there is a risk of losing out of uh, raw materials um, supply. So we have to order uh, much before the stock goes out. So this is a safety stock. We already earlier studied it. Reorder level, that particular level, um, we have to order at that point. There is a reorder level we had already learned in the previous classes. Next comes the stock turnover. No, we'll move to the next slide that is the queuing problems. Now, what is queuing problem? It is a, a newer one to all of you because we are not having this in our previous semesters and we are going to solve this one in our work classes, operation research classes. It is a general structure of a queuing system. You can see over here, these are the customers entering into the system or uh, you can see they are making a queue and they are being served or processed in a server and they are going out. So this whole system is known as a queuing system. We also have here some models we will discuss later on the queuing theory. <coughs> now the basic elements is given over here in a pictorial depiction. And these are the arriving customers, these are the waiting customers. These are the living or discouraged customers. Now this is a service facility where they are being served and when they are served, they are leaving the system. 
this also uh, typical type of queuing system is given this is also a queuing system and this is a uh, more of a real time uh, you can see over there there the men are being standing in a queue and they are being served over here so this is all about the queuing system as uh, basic structure of the queuing system there are some uh, important terms uh, written over here jockeying ranging bulking we will learn this uh, in depth in our queuing theory sessions next what is meta heuristics this is the last topic i think uh, meta heuristics in meta heuristic is a uh, somewhat i will say it is a confusing one and it is a difficult thing uh, the term itself says it is a repetitive process used to solve a problem that even the toughest algorithm with greatest optimization powers fail to be effective or efficient so when we are dealing with a huge uh, data we are uh, going to use this particular field of technique uh, in or that is meta heuristics genetic algorithm particle swarm optimization i have already in pso gas genetic algorithms and colony optimizations actually these are the very um, you say you can say uh, welcoming topic in phd and research for phd and research scholars they are um, doing a lot of research works in using particle swarm optimization and colony optimization genetic algorithm so uh, and this is also a very well known term uh, simulated annealing uh so they mainly uh, deal with huge number of data okay and they are going to solve the problems which cannot be solved easily by toughest algorithm but by the help of this uh, meta heuristic pro techniques uh, genetic algorithms particle swarm optimization and colony optimization were able to solve and get a uh, get a solution from that a uh, huge number of huge range of data you can say okay so i think i have covered the introduction module introduction part of that is the first module um, of operational research subject and uh, um, from next day we are going to learn in depth uh, selecting from module 2 and and the different chapters we have discussed over in the introduction part of this particular over subject okay So that's all for today. Thank you.